Hi everybody, Mr. Hayes. We're back. We're doing statistics. We're wrapping up chapter 10 in the fifth edition of Practice of Statistics. It's the last part of Unit 7. From what the College Board um, encourages us to do, use the units the College Board encourages us to use. This is why you write a script, Mr. Hayes. Anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and just jump in. I think I found a better way to do this now that I'm here at school. So the last one is just this whole idea that you've got, we're going back to that memory training one that we did a couple days ago. Um, 32 seniors randomly selected, try both memory strategies. Remember, one of them was just memorize them straight through. The second one was make a story, if I remember correctly. Um, and then you're going to do the difference of the two words between them. And so the mean difference for each student, or the difference that each student had was a gain of 1.5 words, and the standard deviation right here is 2.7. Um, do these data give convincing evidence that strategy two improves memory at an alpha value of um, 5% significance. So again, let's go through your parameters. This is a little different because if you look at what's going on here up here in the situation, each student is doing both things. Okay, Each student did one and then or strategy one and strategy two, and now we're taking the average of all the differences instead of the difference of all the averages. So your parameters are going to be as such. You're going to have the mean difference. Now notice there's only one mean here because we've already done the subtraction. We've already compared strategy one to strategy two. What you do, you might have a better memory than I do, so you might naturally have more words. And so it makes sense to see how much did you improve as opposed to what, let's say, like the average score for the class was. So the true mean difference of strategy one minus, or strategy two, strategy two minus strategy one. X bar difference is 1.5, significance level is 5%, and your two hypotheses are going to be this, that the mean difference is zero, because again, remember, null hypothesis is always going to be nothing changes, and then the alternative hypothesis, and this goes back up to here, we're saying the strategy two improves the memory. So that means that we know that we want strategy two to be bigger. And so therefore we're saying for the alternative hypothesis that mu, the difference is going to be greater than zero. And notice we defined here that we're doing strategy two minus strategy one. All right. Now for your plan, this is the new part because we've got, hello, there we go. Um, we've got a one sample t-test for differences for the mean of the difference okay so just one sample not two and for your conditions it's random 32 is bigger or is less than one tenth of all seniors in this case and then for the normal one 32 is bigger than 30 so by central limit theorem we've got that randomness means that we can extend it to the population independence means that we don't have to worry about replacement and the normality means that we can use a normal curve so we can use the nt scores instead of having to worry about something else now for the do i'm going to scoot this one down so the mean and standard deviation this is um again one of those things that you should probably just note so you don't have to go searching for it later and those were given and i'm having a hard time scrolling so my apologies um, so your general formula, your test statistic, stat minus null. You can also go stat minus your parameter, all divided by standard deviation. Um, in terms of your picture over here, I'll just delete the whole thing. There we go. So in terms of your picture over here, normal curve, or it's a T-curve, 31 because we had 32. Different um, degrees of freedom is always one less. Because remember, the person who picks second to last is actually making both choices, right? And then for your specific formula, T is going to be X bar difference minus your null divided by. Now, if this, you're going to, you may have to remember for your um, standard deviation that we're using in the T statistic, you might have to remember or remind yourself of this. So it's not just the standard deviation of what we found, but we also have to then divide it by the um, square root of the population. And again, remember the reason for that is, is because the more the population is, the more the curve tightens up. Okay, and so the standard deviation, even though we're seeing that, a standard deviation of 2.7 is different for a group of five people than a different group of 20 people. So there's that. The work, we plug everything, we get 3.14. No, it is not actually pi. It just happens to be a happy coincidence. So when we do this, you're going to get um, your T value of 3.14, degrees of freedom is 31, and your P value is 0 0.001. Uh, one thing I didn't write down here apparently, which I will take care of now, is that we've got, that's going to be your TCDF, 
And then remember what you would, we would end up doing here, as you, as you can see here in the picture. Remember, the picture is obviously to show that you know where it's going on, but it's also basically a graphic organizer for you. So like we're saying, oh yeah, this is the low part. We're going to continue up from there. Um, so we're going to go for 3.14 comma large number comma and then our degrees of freedom. Okay. And so again, remember that it's going to be, whoa, typing's a little slower when you're also running a video software, I guess. So we've got our lower, upper, and degrees of freedom. Okay. Now, if you wanted to do table B, that would look like this. And so what you are going to end up doing here is, first of all, you're going to go down to the degrees of freedom that you have. And remember, if you, your degrees of freedom isn't listed, you go to the previous one, because we're always going to play the more conservative card. So in this case here, since we have 31 degrees of freedom, we would actually go to 30 on the chart. And then you're going to look to see between what two values is your T value. So in this case, our T value is 3.14. So we know that that falls right, oops, here. Okay. So that means if I scroll up, I'm going to treat my T value between, my T value falls, the percentages, the P value for that T value 3.14 falls between 0 0.005 and 0 0.001. Again, we're going to take the more conservative one, so according to table B, you'd use that one. Okay, so I'm going to go continue on with 0 .001, but if you're like a number of my students, they just like table B, they can write it down, they don't have to worry about anything else, it's just there, they don't have to worry about technology, and I can't fault them for that, honestly. Um, in some ways, it's faster than having to write out T, C, D, F, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so back to our countdown. So either way, if you use what we did from table B, you get 0.005. It's still good, still under a 5% because it's only half of a percent, but, you know, each their own. So for our conclusion, it's going to look like this. Assuming the null hypothesis is true, that there is no difference between the mean difference of what we're, of what we're studying is zero. There is a 0 0.001 probability of getting X bar difference of 1.5 or greater purely by chance. So again, that's the interpretation part. You have to explain what the study showed or what your experiment showed, what your test showed. And then we're going to go off and we're going to make the conclusion after that. The conclusion here would be because 0 0.001 is less than our alpha value of 5%, 0 0.05. We reject the null hypothesis because this is convincing evidence that the strategy two is, in fact, the better memory strategy. Okay, actually, I should probably put the word better in there, but you get the idea. So anyway, so that is going to be the end of the first part. I'm going to go over and formalize this in a second, and then we're done with this. And then we've got two quick short chapters, unit eight and nine, maybe about both a week, week and a half each. And then we're studying for the test or reviewing for the test. We're not studying, right? We know all of this. So anyway, I'll talk to you soon.